Hey guys, Rex here, and welcome back to my Let's Play world. Today is episode 23, and first things first, I want to update you on the progress with our villager breeder that we built last episode. So, if we come up here, it's a huge pain to get to. I need to add an easier way to get to it. It is in a very strange spot, so I hopefully won't need to get to it that often once we finish the actual villager trading area and whatnot. But this guy's still here, he's still safe and sound, and if we come down here, you can see I've been breeding lots and lots of villagers, so these are basically just the librarians. I've been killing off the rest of them because I really don't need them. I had that one villager down by, by my wheat and carrot and potato farms that will just give me all the emeralds I need, so all I need, really need now is the librarians. We have a bunch here that we can start trading with, but... The problem is I don't actually have very much sugarcane. I had like nine stacks and that was it. And yeah, I'm going to need more. So I'm going to need to make a sugarcane farm in the near future so we can get some books going. But yeah, so that's how this is going. And I'm going to hopefully very soon get a villager, villager trading area set up somewhere down here. But let's take a look at what we're going to be doing today. So this is the gold farm that we built a while back. But ever since 1.9 came out, it's been completely broken, requiring me to use it like a manual farm. But now that we have the mending enchantment and are in need of a good XP farm, it's about time that we fix this thing up. Oh man, that was dangerous. So I am just finishing up clearing out the old killing area that we had before. And if we just pillar up just so we can get a better view, we are going to be needing to make some design changes in order to get this thing to work now because we are going to be using fall damage to kill the pigmen like a lot of people. I'm going to be doing a similar thing to what Snow Crash did with his farm and what Etho did with his farm. I really like how Etho used the translocators because that uh, makes it so there's a lot less issues with things like mobs spawning on slime blocks and things that I really don't have time to deal with. So, we're just going to try and, and build it as we go here. So, the first thing we have to do is make the discs smaller. Make them the inner radius here. We need to make that larger. So, we need to clear out a bunch of area here. As you can see, maybe uh, up at the top, you can see back there with the nether brick line. I have marked out where I want that to be. So, I just have to push the, the inner radius back a little bit. That's the first step. And the reason for that is because we want the pigmen to try and, and, and go on to... Uh, one of the cardinal directions. We're going to have a little bit that comes out on each end of the circle there. And then what the pigmen are going to try and do is because that little uh, lip which is coming out is a little bit closer to me than any other part of the circle, they're going to go onto that because they want to be as close to me as they can. Then they're going to fall down through some holes and then die. And then we're going to try and use piston translocators to bring the XP back in and then upwards to where I'm standing, which will be approximately right here, maybe a little higher and in the center here. So, like I said, the first thing I have to do is push the inner radius back. So that is what I'm going to do and I will see you when I'm done. So after what has just been a jump cut for you, but a very long while for me, I have finally expanded the rings here and man, that took a long time. I am so surprised at how long that took. And it also took a lot of nether brick. I hate making nether brick, and I don't like mining either. It's just a pain to get nether brick in general. But it's done now, and I will say I am super excited for this thing because I, you can see here that I made a little gap in my little pathway that I have going up here, and I decided to give this thing a little test by sending a couple pigmen over the edge, and that is exactly what I did. I just literally just broke a couple of blocks here, and punched a pigment, they all went spewing off the edge here, went down to the bottom, and my pick, which I had used to mine all of this out, which had depleted its entire durability, it was at 44 durability, and I went down, picked up all the XP, and now it's basically back to full again. So, in my opinion, the Mending Enchantment is kind of overpowered. It, like, the rate at which it repairs your tools is, is kind of ridiculous, but... We still have to make a lot more progress on this before it's done. I probably sunk in, I don't know, like it probably took like two hours just to, to push that back. And uh, 
yeah, it was pretty crazy. So the next thing we have to do is add the drop shafts for the pigment to fall down. And then we can add the translocators. I'll probably do that after. I'll probably just add the drop shafts. And you know what? I'll see you when I've done some more work on those. All right, guys. So... I've added a whole bunch of chambers on the side here, and these are designed to trick the pigment into falling down the hole. So, the way they work is these three blocks I've sort of extended on the outside, like I mentioned before. And when I'm in standing in the center, the pigment are going to want to get as close to me as they can when they're angry. And they're going to want to wind up on these blocks here, because they happen to be the closest ones to me. And I might, I might have to extend these out one more, I don't know. But, yeah, they're going to try and pathfind onto these little platforms here. And when they do so, they are going to fall into the holes where these trap doors are because they think the trap doors they can walk over and the carpet they don't see as an obstruction. So they should see uh, a valid path to get onto here and they should try and, and get to there and then they'll just fall through. So now we're going to give it a quick tester to see if that works. Now, the only thing I'm really, tr um, I'm really worried about here is that possibly they might all fall through too quickly and then there won't be any pigment left to make the other pigment mad. Is that a skeleton? No, it's just a pigment. What am I talking about? Anyway, yeah, so if that happens, we're going to have to add some staircases and block off the top and, and lower ones so that they have to walk around more, which will mean they'll stick, a long, stick around long enough for the other ones to get mad. So let's give this a quick test. We should hop up on a pillar in the middle here. Let's go up a little bit more, and let's try it. I got my fingers crossed. This probably won't work, but here it goes. Okay, they're going to the corners. That's good. And they're falling through. That's also good. Oh. Yeah, see, that's exactly what I was talking about. Uh, that is probably not reliable. Even, even though it worked this time, it's probably not going to be that reliable, and we're probably going to have to... I don't know. It seems like it might be working. You know what? I think I'll do some more testing, and I'll get back to you with the results. So it looks like phase one of this gold farm project is complete. All of the major structural elements of the farm have gone in. So I've got these tubes coming down now from each um, of the little places where the pigment are going to fall. And then down here, we've got some nice magma block lined translocators here. And, yeah, so all we have to do now to get this thing up and running is the redstone, which is going to be a huge pain, but, yeah, we're going to do that this episode, and then I don't know if I'm going to have time to do the item collection and sorting and that kind of thing while, or during this episode, because I am running out of time, I'm a bit press pressed for time this episode, and I must apologize, guys, because I cannot seem to get my words straight today, it's just like my brain knows what it wants to say, but then it tries to get my mouth to do it, and it just doesn't happen. But as you can see, this actually works really well. Um, I haven't had any problems so far with it stopping, except maybe I forgot to open the trapdoors there. Or I put them on the wrong side. or so. I, Yeah, I think I put them on the wrong side there. Whoopsie. Anyway, yeah, it looks like it's working, and if we come down here... Hopefully I don't die. Ugh, I've been killing myself with the Elytra so much this episode. And uh, you can see there's tons and tons of XP if I just put some blocks here. I can get tons of XP and it is just... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, heart attack. Okay, I'll see you when I've gotten some more redstone done. Okay, I cannot believe what has just happened here. So, I'm here working on my redstone. I've done this translocator here and the one opposite of it and the one in the center that goes upwards. And I'm sitting up there, testing out the farm, gathering my XP, got 75 levels, and guess what gets translocated to the top? Yep, this guy right here, and he knocks me off the tower. Oh man, that was great. Okay, hopefully this guy isn't mad at me. Thank you very much. I can't believe that happened. So, I guess he fell down because he's on a chicken, didn't die, and then the translocators just translocate him translocated him all the way to the top 
And here he is. That's hilarious. I can't even see him. I am actually at a loss for what to do about that. Because that's just going to happen. As you can see, I've got some pistons there that push the XP into the center and then it gets pulled into the middle. But these guys are just going to get pulled along with them. So I'm really not sure what I'm going to do about that. But I think I'm going to finish the rest of uh, the other two translocators here and then I will try and come up with a solution to these little guys. Eh. Oh, see ya. Okay guys, it has been a long road, but I have finally completed all of the redstone down here that is needed to make this farm fully functional, and as you can see, it is working like a charm. I have 126 levels already, tons and tons of gold down below, and yeah, we just got pigmen falling to their deaths down here, and then the translocators are bringing the XP in, and the items are being collected down below. I still have to do something about the magma cubes. I'm probably going to put iron golems around the outside so they just are attracted to them and then fall off the edge because they're preventing extra pigmen from spawning, and we don't want that. Get out of here, chicken. And yeah, I did find a way to deal with those pesky baby zombies on the chickens, the chicken jockey ones. So let's finally take a look at how this system works. So we have four identical wings here. So the pigmen fall down the tubes, and then we have a hopper timer in the middle, which controls all four of them. We kind of alternate which ones activate. We have two of them activate, and then the other two, and then the first two, and then the other two. And that way we don't get them activating all at the same time, so it's less laggy. And if we get chuck this off the edge here. What we have here is something that's going to be really hard to show you guys, because there's a whole bunch of redstone here. And basically what it's doing is when the pigmen fall down, or when it gets the signal sent from the timer in the middle what's going to happen is it's going to push these two side pistons in i don't know why this guy's here he shouldn't be here because i guess he survived the fall but it doesn't really matter and i'll explain why in a second because these pistons are going to extend inwards pushing all of the xp into the center block and then this piston here is going to translocate it back into right in the space where that half slab is but because there is a half slab only the XP can go in there. The pigmen and magma cubes, whatever falls in here, any mobs can't actually be translocated into the space with this half slab because obviously there is the half slab. And because this is more than 32 blocks away from where I'm standing up above, things can despawn while they're there. So I don't have to worry about that. It may, you know, very, very slightly lower the rates of the farm, but it's not really enough to, to justify completely redoing this section just because of that. And then we simply activate the whole translocator chain here. As you can see, it will bring the XP into the middle. And then we have another translocator chain going upward to bring the XP up onto my little perch. So if I build a little bridge out here, you can see that underneath the magma blocks here, which are used to kill chickens when they fall down. It's not really necessary, but I still have it there. We have hopper mine cards underneath here that are going to instantly pick up any items that drop from the dead pigmen. Hello. Oh, they're still angry. <laughs> and then they're going to be carried by a hopper chain underneath the whole uh, extension here. And they're going to be converging all in the middle. And under here I have a very, very pathetic storage unit for these. And so as you can see, if I look in this chest, it's basically completely full. It's not completely full right now because the farm isn't running. But basically when the farm is running, the items come way too fast for the system to be able to deal with it. So it's due for an upgrade very, very soon. But for the time being, I just have a couple sorters here and a dropper to drop all of the, uh, the rotten flesh and the swords into lava. And then the gold goes into these chests here. So we've got the gold gold ingots here and then a whole bunch of gold nuggets which I'm probably going to be using to make golden carrots because I've noticed that in 1.10 or 1.9 1.10 between the fact that they have the new healing system and the fact that you can have food in your offhand I end up eating a lot more food so having golden carrots would really help with that but yeah that is pretty much all of the redstone that I have so far done for this system but man, guys, does this thing ever clog up quickly? 
check it out. If I come down here, I've only been up here for a little while. I've got up to 250 levels. I keep killing myself with my Elytra, though, so I probably won't keep it for very long. But you can see it's all backed up all the way up through the hoppers. And what has actually happened here, it's happened more than once now, is that it backs up all the way to here. So the hoppers cannot pick up the items. They get stuck there. And then we get gold swords on the ground. And then the pigmen, which have regular gold swords, they fall down here and they realize that they can pick up the swords that are there. And I don't know why they don't die, but normally they all die. Uh, they, they only don't die if the system is clogged up for some reason. And it's like they pick up the gold sword because it's better than the one that they have, and then they become persistent, and then they don't despawn. So that's kind of annoying. So the solution to that is obviously to fix the system down there. But unfortunately, guys, I can't do that this episode because I have run out of time this has been a shorter episode, but it has taken me absolutely forever to do all of this. I really just didn't anticipate it taking this long, uh, because it's really awkward to build off in the void like this. And, yeah. So, if you did enjoy the video, then a like would be much appreciated, and follow me on Twitter at NanoRexMC for more updates. But thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time. Rex out.